Good evening. I'm Marlene Sanders. When Election Day ballots are counted, we will have selected a new president. The voting on Tuesday will also determine who will represent our communities in Congress. Here in New York, in several key races, the outcome is by no means certain. Tonight, we'll give voters the chance to hear candidates from four districts talk about issues that concern us all. The debates are in races in Manhattan, Westchester, Long Island, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Before we begin, with us are three journalists who've been covering political races here in New York. They are veteran political reporter Maurice Carroll of New York Newsday, Jim Hughes of the Staten Island Advance, and Roger Stern of News 12 Long Island. Before we begin our debates, uh, as reporters covering outside the city line is the 20th Congressional District in Westchester. Two-term incumbent Joseph Diogardi faces Nita Lowy in this suburban district. Just over the northern edge of New York City's border is Westchester County, home of the 20th Congressional District. Long considered a haven for the wealthy, Westchester includes the majestic estates of Larchmont and the beautiful suburban homes of Mount Vernon. Yet most Westchester residents live in modest luxury, many in apartment houses in small cities like New Rochelle. Politically, this Westchester district swings between support for liberal Republicans and conservative Democrats, making it a challenge for congressional candidates. For this debate, with us is the incumbent Republican Congressman Joseph Diaguardi and his Democratic opponent, Nita Lowy. Ms. Lowy, charges of uh, illegal campaign financing on both of your parts have uh, dominated this campaign. Let's try to get it straightened out. Do you believe your opponent is a crook? Oh, I don't like to use those words, but it has been reported in the Gannett paper and the New York Times that $57,000 has appeared in the Diaguardi campaign account. This is illegal. It has been laundered through secretaries, bookkeepers, and salespersons. And when Joe Diaguardi was asked about the $57,000, he said he didn't know. It's accountability that's the issue. Joe Diaguardi is a certified public accountant. And I want to tell you, I know how hard it is to raise $100 in my campaign. And if $57,000 came in in two or three days, I'd want to know where it came from and how it got there. So I question the CPA's accountability. All right, Mr. Diaguardi. Well, that's not the issue in this race, but let me address it just briefly. Uh, no one could have been more upset than me when that uh, came to our attention. I immediately called the FEC to do the investigation. I asked Mr. Crabtree to step down, which he did, and we sent letters to all these Crabtree donors uh, advising them that if they thought there was any impropriety around these contributions, that we would give them their money back. The real issue in this race, and this, the choice couldn't be clearer, uh, I stand for a death penalty for drug kingpins who commit murder. She doesn't. Uh, she supports tax increases. I don't. I think these are the issues of greatest importance and obviously the environment and housing and others that I hope that we discuss here today. All right, Mickey. Yeah, Mr. Diaguardi, I, 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 let's talk about substance, but just for a second, why don't we ask you to evaluate her campaign? Okay. Well, uh, since she raised the issue, uh, obviously accountability has to be a level playing field. Uh, we have uh, some grave doubts. In fact, the FEC is now investigating her campaign for $350,000 worth of loans uh, that she's made. Uh, uh, from whom? I mean, she well, loaned the, so, the, well we, we'd like to find out, and that's the, that's the problem. Uh, she makes $41,000 a year. Uh, you know, it takes me six months to uh, raise $350,000. It took her six seconds to write those checks. Uh, and there is grave doubt now whether or not that money uh, came from joint accounts on a date that preceded the date of her announcement for Congress. Uh, these are very complex rules. And you just can't expect that your spouse can put in money. In fact, spouses in, in states like New York uh, can only give the uh, $1,000 per election. And that's either a loan or a contribution. Here we have uh, uh, so-called joint monies being funneled in. At this point, we have not seen the indication or the evidence that these are, in fact, well, legal contributions. It's a great time. Well, where did the money come from? Joe, <laughs> you know that's a smokescreen. All my records have been given to the reporter. Steve and I began working at $100 a week. We have joined accounts. We have joined checkbooks. Every dollar of that $350,000 that has been loaned to this campaign, and as I mentioned to you before, I believe in campaign finance reform. I think it's obscene that we had to loan it. But every dollar is my money, and Joe knows it. Oh. It's just a smokescreen to cover the $57,000 really. in illegal contributions that thing. have been reported in the Gannett and the New York Times and all over the radio. So come on, Joe. Well. Let's tell the truth. Let's tell the facts the way it is. And Joe. 
I think maybe you can tell the people today that you're going <clears> to <throat> return every dollar of that $57,000 and not wait for people to request the money. They're still employees of Crabtree. What Tree. about your three fifty? You're going to It's all my back. money. I've made oh, it very clear. Well, I've loaned it to the campaign, and I hope that I can raise the money. There is a critical uh, date here. Yeah. The date is she's it, provided information. Wait a minute. Okay, can I, can I interrupt? Nothing. Because why, yeah, neither of you are crooks. I mean, okay, actually, right. you're both qualified, nice people. Let's talk about issues, right. okay? Sure. Matter I, of accountability. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> let me ask you about one, which I think you, that, that you have a, a serious philosophical difference on, and that's this this uh, uh, child care daycare business if I'm not whose turn is it uh, uh, well it doesn't okay matter. well anyway uh, uh, mr. congressman my recollection is that, that you agree with mr. Bush on tax credit <coughs> blah 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 and, and Ms. Lowy I think that you have uh, agreed with mr. Dukakis on a more elaborate uh, mm -hmm. bureaucracy if you will mr. DeGuardi what's well, your view there are many approaches to it there are two main approaches right now and I support uh, congresswoman Nancy Johnson's approach it's called the child care improvement services act uh, which gives much more flexibility in this area. We don't want to take out the, uh, the home people. We don't want to take out the churches and the synagogues from the issue of, of daycare. And the, the bill that uh, my opponent uh, here supports would do that. Uh, we don't want to take an institutional approach to daycare. So I've uh, supported Nancy Johnson's bill because I believe it has the flexibility. That's essentially tax credits. Uh, that's one version of it, one aspect yeah. of it. Okay. Ms. Lowy? Now, I think we're getting caught up in bureaucracy. The point is, yeah. and I've served on the Child Care Commission for two and a half years working with Mario Cuomo and Matilda Cuomo on this important issue. More than 50% of women are working today. No, no, there I, isn't I, well, any child care. The child care, I assume. The, the, uh, problem is, yes, the problem is the financing. And who runs Mickey, it? everybody wants child care. But the yeah. bottom line is, no one wants to pay for it. I've been working with corporations, I've been working with community groups, I've been working with government to try and get more child care. Fine to have a tax credit. That's one approach. Well, how no about problem. Mr. Dukakis, who wants to set up a bureaucracy? You know, to, to, there's nothing the matter with it, but that's what he wants. Mickey, the <laughs> real problem is getting the resources so that mothers who are out there working can put their children in child care. There isn't Mickey, enough. And the, the bill that Joe head. Diaguardi is talking about doesn't begin to address the real severe problem we have out there. Uh, Mickey, you hit the real nail on the head. We don't need a bigger bureaucracy. I found a great definition of the bureaucracy. It's the process of turning energy into solid waste. <laughs> we don't want to expand that part of government. I think we need flexibility. And in Westchester County, probably the key component of that bill is that it will allow the churches and the synagogues to remain a key player in providing daycare. Um, I'd like to turn to another issue right now and to start with Ms. Lowy. Do you believe your constituents support more spending for Star Wars? I believe that Joe DiGuardi, who supports Star Wars and supports the fact that we are going to be committed to $69 billion, and if it's really deployed, trillions of dollars for Star Wars, is not appropriate not only for my district, but around the country. We have real problems. We need money for drugs. We need money to get the criminal off the street. We got to get rid of the drug problem in Westchester County. We need money to clean up our environment. We need the resources to deal with education and childcare and affordable housing. To waste 69 billions of dollars plus, that's raising taxes. Joe DiAguardi is talking about raising our taxes 69 billion dollars on his fantasy Star Wars. That's not what the people of Westchester County want. I let the congressman respond. Well, I don't know where she gets those numbers, but let me say this. Uh, she, opposes, <laughs> she opposes the very system, the strategic defense initiative that brought the Soviets to the talking table, not once, not twice, four times, led our president to go to the Soviet Union, to lecture Secretary General Gorbachev on human rights, and we have a treaty. Now, what is wrong with a defensive system? The Russians right now are doing research. Uh, the question of money, we need to provide money for the other programs. I've been one who has voted for a freeze in the military two times now, my two terms. I say that we need to have a strong defense, but not a spendthrift defense. And we need to find the money for SDI from those non-essential programs like uh, Sergeant York Gun and many other things that are going on right now in the military. Mickey, yeah, last as question. As, uh, quickie? Okay, as long as we're on foreign military policy, what about aid to the countries? Well, I support uh, aid to the countries because I see that as a national security issue. I do not want to see another launching pad for Soviet or Cuban aggression in this hemisphere. And it's as basically as simple as that. And uh, I, I mean, I, I don't see this as Contras versus Sandinistas. I see this as trying to keep the Russians and the Cubans out of that area. Ms. Lowy? I'm opposed to aid to the countries. It hasn't worked, Joe. 
We've been sending military aid there for six years or more, and it just hasn't worked. And I think it's time that we act as a broker and use every diplomatic resource at our disposal to work with the Arias Peace Plan, to work with the nations in Central America, to really bring about a peace so we can restore that you don't government. Believe in pressure. I don't believe the aid to the conscious has worked. Has been pressured. Pilly, okay. pilly, what's happened there is that children are dying, communities are being destroyed, housing is burned, and we have to get on with the peace process. Let me and say this. that has not worked. Uh, we don't disagree on that. We need to give peace a chance. There's no question about that. Uh, but uh, I believe in the pressure. We have but time. I don't think it's appropriate pressure. I think we have to work with the Arias Please Peace Plan to bring about a real pre uh, peace. I think we have time for another quick question. Do we? Okay, could I do a, I'll do a bing, bing, bing. Social issues, okay? Uh, which is the big thing in a presidential, uh, presidential death penalty, abortion. Uh, Let's just deal with those. Those two, those are pretty right. well, I support uh, the death penalty. In fact, I was proud to uh, uh, be there at 2.30 in the morning when that bill came back to the House, uh -huh. uh, and it did have and a, a drug. death penalty for drug kingpins who commit murder. Look what's what happening about right here. Just quick, quick, quick answers. What about abortion? abortion? Well, I'm, uh, uh, I don't think abortion is right, and I have voted consistently against the federal funding, tax dollars being used for abortions, right. except in the, life of the, in the case of the life of the mother. Right. I believe you have to catch the criminals, and you have to convict them, and then you have to can them. And Joe Diaguardi has voted against funds for the Drug Enforcement Agency. You can't grill them if yeah, you can't catch them. <laughs> can you execute them? You can't grill them if you can't well, catch them, and that's the real that. right, Let's problem. just deal with, with the death penalty and abortion. I'm against the death penalty, and I think the focus on getting rid of drugs in our community is enforcement of the laws. And, and the both. choice? I believe that every woman should have the right to choose whether or not she should have a child, and I think it's cruel and insensitive that Joe Diaguardi voted against victims of race, at rape and incest having an abortion. All right. Poor people should be allowed just as well as people in the middle class. Thank you both very much. You have time now for a one-minute closing statement each. Congressman? Well, thank you. I think that uh, the real issue in this race is uh, effective representation and leadership for Westchester County. And um, I believe when it comes to the issues of greatest concern to Westchester County, uh, that I have delivered, and I've delivered uh, in very specific terms. Uh, I introduced and passed housing uh, legislation, uh, legislation that would make housing more affordable and accessible. I introduced and helped pass legislation that would block uh, very substantial cuts for the homeless in our district. Uh, I started two congressional caucuses uh, on the environment, one for the Long Island Sound and one for the uh, Hudson River. So I believe when you look at the record, and by the way, on that drug bill, four provisions in that drug bill were provisions that were, were mine. Uh, one of them to uh, actually test uh, people uh, in jail before they put on, uh, before they put on prob uh, probation. And I think it's time that we took creative approaches uh, such as that. So I think the, the bottom line is that uh, we have a complex district uh, and we need to preserve the quality of life, but we also have to deal with 4,000 homeless in the district. And I believe that I've uh, projected the values that uh, will ensure that we continue that kind of representation in Congress. All right, Nita Lowy, your time. Thank you. The New York Times endorsed Mike Dukakis and Nita Lowy. The Daily News endorsed George Bush and Nita Lowy. They both agree that Nita Lowy would be the best representative for the 20th Congressional District, and I'm very grateful for that support. The New York Times said he can cite few real achievements and shows little capacity for leadership. I want to use this opportunity to thank all my supporters and all my volunteers in Westchester County. I am very grateful. I've traveled around the district. I've listened to thousands of voters talking about the issues of concern for Westchester County. I believe that my 12 years of experience working with Mario Cuomo, Basil Patterson, and Gail Schaefer on the issues of concern to Westchester County can make a difference. I want to fight for child care. I want to fight to make our schools the best in the nation. I want to fight to clean up our environment. I want to rid our streets from drugs and crime. I believe that my experience can accomplish that, and I hope I've convinced the voters and vote on November 8th for Nita Lowy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both for being with us today. Long Island, a bustling summer vacation area. But at summer's end, the district returns to its rustic rural roots. In towns like Riverhead, farmers still cultivate their potato fields. Lilco's controversial nuclear power plant at Shoreham continues to be of paramount concern to voters here, as state efforts to take over the ailing project continue. The incumbent in this district is Democrat George Hochbrockner. His Republican challenger, Ed Romaine, is here with us in the studio. 
Congressman Hock Bruckner had agreed to participate in this debate, but earlier this week he suddenly withdrew. In fairness to Mr. Romaine, we'll talk with him about the issues confronting the 1st District. Roger Stern, you get the first question. Mr. Romaine, uh, you're doing what a uh, number of Republican challengers are doing, accusing your Democratic opponent of being too liberal. Now, Mr. Hock Bruckner had been elected to the Assembly a number of times out there on the East End, uh, elected to Congress. Why do you suppose that is if he's so out of touch with his district? 